and the winner of the 2023 stat stack is hello hello everyone the time has come after a little movie called coda broke all the stats the stat stack it's back it's new it's improved and it's better than ever for those who don't know what the stat stack is it's a formula created to look at oscar's most staggering stats as it pertains to best picture to see which film has the strongest case for taking home that nice golden statue now the stat stack was first on a roll right the first year we did this it correctly predicted parasite then correctly predicted no man land but its streak was broken when the little coda that could demolished all the stats then after a week of questioning everything i know about the oscars everything i know about the world everything i know about myself it was back to the drawing board to create a new and improved formula and one that would still use and incorporate those important factors like guilds and award shows and key nominations. So today, I'm going to present that new and hopefully improved formula as well as show how the stat stack stacked up against other years. So let's go ahead and get started and see what this formula cooked up. So right here, I have eight staggering stats as it pertains to Best Picture. And I have, as you can see, all this year's Best Picture nominees. So for every one of these stats that these Best Pictures fulfills, I'm going to award one point. And the film with the most points will be the winner and my official prediction for Best Picture. So let's go ahead and get started, starting with our first stat. This one is the Major Guild win stat. This one says since 2009. 13 out of the last 13 Best Picture winners have won at least DGA, PGA, or WGA. So since 2009, every single Best Picture winner has won at least one major guild. This year, Everything Everywhere pretty much swept the entire thing, but Women Talking did get a WGA. So only two films earned the point this year, and that is Everything Everywhere All at Once and Women Talking. Moving on to our next stat. This one I call the SAG crown stat. So this one says, since 2009, if a film wins SAG and one other major guild like DGA, PGA, or WGA, it has won best picture. So some examples of this is like CODA, uh, Parasite, like Birdman, they won SAG ensemble and also one other major guild. So if they win kind of two, uh, of those, it's kind of a killer combo, so I call it the SAG crown stat. And this year, that was only one film, and that was Everything Everywhere All at Once, one SAG ensemble, and one Another Major Guild. So it's got guild support as well as some support amongst actors, so it gets one of those special SAG crown points. Next is our next stat, and this is the Any Acting Nomination stat. This one states, since 2009, 12 out of the last 13 Best Picture winners has also received one acting nomination. So there's only been one time since 2009 that a film won Best Picture without being nominated for any acting, and that was Parasite. So this year, only five of the Best Picture nominees were nominated in acting categories, and that was Everything Everywhere All at Once, Elvis, Tar, The Fablemans, and the Banshees of Inishirin. All right, moving on to our next stat. And this one is the SAG Ensemble nomination stat. I'm bringing this one back because it's important. Since 2009, 10 out of the last 13 Best Picture winners has also received a SAG Ensemble nomination. There's been three times that didn't happen since 2009. That's Shape of Water, Green Book, and No Man Land. Those were the outliers. And this year, four Best Picture nomine uh, nominees received a SAG Ensemble nomination, and that was Everything Everywhere All at Once, Women Talking, The Fablemans, and The Banshees of Anna Sharon. All right, moving on to our next point, and this one is called the Major Award Show Stat. And this one states, since 2009, 13 out of the last 13 Best Picture winners have won at least BAFTA, Critics' Choice, Golden Globes or SAG Ensemble. So it's got to win one of those major televised award shows in order to get this point. And this year, there were four different films that won uh, the Golden Globes, the Critics' Choice, 
uh, and or BAFTA and SAG, and that was Everything Everywhere All at Once. The Fablemans won the Golden Globe. The Banshees of Inishirin won the Comedy Golden Globe. And All Quiet on the Western Front won the BAFTA. All right, let's do a quick recap. Right now we have Everything Everywhere in the lead with five points. And we have the Fablemans and Banshees of Inishirin, both with three points. Women Talking here with two points. And Elvis, All Quiet on the Western Front. And Tar, all with one point. But I still have three stats to give out. And these three stats are designated for important Oscar nominations. That's very important to have if you want to win Best Picture. And the first one is a screenplay one. It says right here that since 2009, 13 of the last 13 Best Picture winners have been nominated for both. BAFTA and Academy Awards in the screenplay category. So typically, if you want to win Best Picture, having a screenplay is pretty important. And this year, there were six Best Picture nominated films that were nominated for screenplay. And that was Everything, Everywhere, All at Once, Tar, The Fablemans, The Banshees of Inishirin, Triangle of Sadness, and all quiet on the Western Front. All right, moving on to the editing stat. And this one states, since 2009, 11 out of the last 13 Best Picture winners has also received an editing nomination. So only two times uh, since 2009 has a film won Best Picture without an editing nomination. And that was very recently with CODA as well as Birdman. So this year, five films have received an editing nomination, and that was Everything Everywhere All at Once, Elvis, Tar, Top Gun Maverick, with its first point, and The Banshees of Inishirin. All right, this next one is the DGA nomination stat, and this one states, since 2009, 12 out of the last 13 Best Picture winners has received a Best Director nomination for either the Academy Awards or DGA. It's got to hit one of those. Um, and there was a one outlier to this out of the last 13, and that was CODA. But this year, we have six films that were nominated for either an Academy Award or DGA, and that was Everything Everywhere All at Once, Tar, The Banshees of Inishirin, Triangle of Sadness, The Fablemans, and Top Gun Maverick. All right, so it looks like we have a winner. Pretty clear. Everything, everywhere, all at once, as expected, one with eight points. But let's talk about this, guys. So only eight points were available, and Everything, Everywhere, All at Once got the maximum number of points, which you know, when you think about it, it makes sense, right? Because it did sweep all the major guilds, awards like PGA, DGA, uh, WGA, SAG, which no film has actually managed to do since Argo over 10 years ago. So unlike Argo, though, Everything Everywhere looks even stronger than Argo because it was nominated for director and has more actors nominated. So the only knock really against Everything Everywhere and let's continue using Argo as an example, is that Argo did win the Golden Globes drama and BAFTA while Everything Everywhere All at Once lost BAFTA and Golden Globes comedy. Now, with that being said, uh, it's loss at BAFTA doesn't feel like the most damning thing ever. I mean, similarly, like Green Book lost the BAFTAs and it only won one award at BAFTAs, just like Everything Everywhere All at Once, just one award, and it still went on to win Best Picture. So cutting to the chase, do I think it's possible? Is there any chance that Everything Everywhere All at Once doesn't win? Well, I stopped saying anything was impossible a year ago. But what I will say is I haven't felt this sure a film was winning since, say, well, since Argo, really. So based on this experiment, if any film were to surprise us, if any film were, to completely shock us and come through as the winner that isn't everything everywhere all at once, I'd, I would say it's the Mansions of Inishirin. Now, 
That would be pretty amazing though, because that film has not won any major guild. So that would be quite the feat. But let's entertain this idea that Banshees uh, is more beloved than we think it is. Maybe, you know, it doesn't get um, as many number one votes as everything everywhere at once, but maybe it's more widely admired. You know, maybe it scores more number twos significantly in threes on the preferential ballot. So another shocking upset that we can look at in recent years was, of course, the La La Land and Moonlight year. Moonlight that year didn't win any major guild or award show except the WGA and Golden Globes. And Banshees is in a very similar position, right? Banshees won Golden Globe comedy at the Golden Globes over Everything Everywhere All at Once. And it didn't win WGA because it wasn't eligible. Now, I know some of you at home is like, come on, man. Come on, why even talk about it? It's over, it's done. But look, it's my job to talk about it. I mean, I don't get paid, but we should always keep an eye out for what's possible because many impossible things happen all the time. And only in retrospect do we see the impossible as possible when it's over, right? Only after the fact do we go, oh, I see it clearly now. So with that being said, what I'm predicting at the end of the day, well, I'm gonna stick with my stat stack as I always will, and I'm predicting everything everywhere all at once. Now, do I feel comfortable that it's going to win? I'd say I feel as comfortable as I can possibly be comfortable uh, when it comes to the Oscars. If Banshees had won BAFTA, the idea of an upset I would probably entertain more seriously. And I think that was a huge sign that there's just not a strong enough number two to really threaten everything everywhere all at once as chances. However, I've said before, and I'm thinking of getting a shirt made that says it, it's not over until it's over. But I think for everything everywhere all at once, I think it's practically over. <laughs> as over as it can be. And I do think it is winning best picture. Now, as I mentioned before, I went ahead and ran this new formula every year of the new preferential voting era dating back to 2009. And every single year, the winner of this formula ended up taking home best picture. Uh, four years, there was a tie. So like in baseball, when the tie goes to the runner, in this case, the tie goes to the film that also won PGA. And after doing that, the eventual winner does emerge. But you know what? Blah, 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 blah. Let me just show you how this new stat stack stacked up and all those other years. Check it out. There you go, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this experiment and new formula. Hopefully this formula can continue to evolve until we can both get to a place where we feel like, yes, we did it, guys. We cracked the best picture code. Until then, we'll always keep trying. And guys, comment below who you're predicting for best picture and any anyone specific that you're rooting for. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more content like this, hit the subscribe button down below. And I also have the annual preferential ballot video coming in the next day or two and more Oscar related videos. Follow me on Letterboxd, Twitter, link in the video descriptions below. And as always, thank you for watching. And until next time, I will see you at the Oscars.